to find that your upright world has turned upside down. What do you do when all of a sudden the stuff you read about in the newspaper, now you have become a victim of the attack of the enemy? What do you do when all of a sudden you realize that your most precious treasures, the people you love the most, are now in the stronghold of an enemy. What do you do when all of a sudden you realize everything you have worked for has now leaked out and you have no possessions left? And if that wasn't bad enough, the people David thought he could always rely on for support. They turned on David and started blaming him. You're the reason why all of this has happened. All of this is your fault. They were picking up stones and ready to throw at him. What do you do when the people that you thought at a time of trouble would always come to your relief and rescue and now they're turning your back and blaming you for the problem that you're in? What do you do? How do you do? The only thing that you can do David's dreams had become ashes. When his family had been stolen and kidnapped, when his possessions were gone, when everything he loved had vanished and the people that he loved had turned on him to blame him, the scripture says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. There may very well come a time in your life when everybody that you thought would always be available to you suddenly has turned their back on you. There may come a time when you become a victim of the attack of the enemy and everybody starts blaming you because the attack has taken place. There may come a time when you can't find anybody to support you. Even the prayer lines that you call and the websites you go on, you can't get anybody there to encourage you. But in that moment, you can pick up yourself and you can encourage yourself in the Lord. I've often wondered what David said when he encouraged himself in the Lord. Maybe he said something like he would later write in the Psalms, accounting the time when Absalom, his own family, had turned on him. And he wrote these words. Maybe this is what he said in Psalm 3, Lord, how my adversaries have increased. How many there are that are arising up against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no hope for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory. You are the lifter up of my head. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill. From which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve my soul. The Lord will preserve me from this time forth. Even forevermore I was once young, but now I am old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No one seen me out thank you for praying. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You can turn your eyes toward him and encourage yourself in the Lord. David said to Abiathar the priest, Please bring me the ephod. Now you remember that ephod was that beautifully ornamented vest that the high priest wore. On that vest were 12 stones, each of them representing a tribe of the nation of Israel and the covenant that God made with Israel. Also inside of that vest were two other stones, a Urim and a Thuman, by which the priest would use to discern the will of the Lord. So David took that vest and he wrapped himself up in the covenant. 
And he began to pray. Why pray now? It is your fault. Mr. Thomas, Abraham prayed, God spared God. Moses prayed, the face of Yoda. Hagar prayed, a well of water appeared in the wilderness. Joshua prayed, the sun stood still. So he turned his eyes up and he just prayed. Lord, shall I pursue after this truth? Will I overtake them? And God answered. And God said to him what he may be saying to some of you here tonight. You who have seen your family attacked. You who have seen your job, your livelihood, and those things that you have worked for suddenly vanish. You who have wept in the night season until there is no more power to weep. Maybe God is saying to you what he said to David. God said to David, Pursue! Now there are times when God says, Sit and know that I am God. There are times that God says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. There are times when God says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But then there are those moments when God says, How long will you sit there in your self-pity? How long will you sit there in the pond of Islam? How long will you sit there adopting a victim mentality? It's time for you to stand up. It's time for you to brush off the dust from your clothes, even though everything within you wants to hide. It's time for you to start putting one foot in front of the other. It's time to get all the attention. It's time to pursue, pursue, pursue. And he said, if you will just start stepping out on my promise, you shall overtake them. In other words, God said, they can.